Hi, this is Nick Coya with the Portage County Safety Council and the Ohio Bureau of Workers' Compensation, and I'm here today with Mike Thompson from Portage County Safety Council. Mike, how's it going? How's it going, Nick? Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm excited. You know, uh, we started a new project, as uh, many of our listeners know. Mike and I get bored, and we try to come up with new <laughs> ideas. Yes, yeah, very true. Uh, this happens often. We have, we have short attention spans. Uh, but we wanted to take a more serious approach this time and look at what's happening in the workplace with COVID and elections and holidays. It all equates to one simple word, stress. And so we wanted to take a look at what's happening in the workplace, how stress is impacting that, and then provide tools, lectures, ideas, thoughts, anything to help you personally develop through stress and to help you help your employees. And that's what we're here to talk about. So the best way for us to capture this data was a survey. So Mike's gonna to talk to us today a little bit about our 2020 stress survey we did through the Portage County Safety Council. So Mike, why don't you give us a little overview? So Nick, this all started because we did a webinar with Impact Solutions EAP on October 22nd of 2020. And there was just, they kind of described what they were seeing and everyone in there was like, hey man, we've been seeing this kind of stuff at our workplace. We've been seeing, you know, people through Zoom calls, they look tired, they look, you know, people are calling it lockdown fatigue and all these different things. And, you know, you and I did some research before about how stress affects workplace safety last year pre-COVID-19 and we were kind of blown away statistically how stressed America is in Western societies in general. And so that was something we've already, uh, you know, delve it, dove into a little bit. But um, so when right. this came up and we had that webinar, I was like, we have to look more into this now post-COVID. We're not going to wait for some big research firm. We're going to see how it affects our members. So that's what took us to this. We emailed this out uh, the end of October and um, Again, this is, isn't super scientific. This is just our members, but it gives us a good idea. And uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to stop share. It's not moving and try to reshare it. Hey, and that's, this is part of the stress, right? We've learned <laughs> that um, technology Zoom doesn't work can like be it's our supposed friend to all time. And our, yeah, and it can be our biggest enemy at the same time. So, hey. We, we adapt, we overcome, and we work through it. Let's see if it shares this time. There we go. All right. All right. Reset, reset, exit, and go back in. Always works. All right. Thank you, Zoom, for embarrassing me. But all right. So the first question we asked, Nick, is right here. Since the beginning of the pandemic, how much stress are you dealing with? Now, keep in mind, these are our members. They're employer companies, safety managers, with about 30% HR, 30% safety managers, uh, about 15 to 25%. CEOs at any given time in our meetings and the rest is just random different positions and representing different industries, manufacturing, transportation, schools, hospitals, government, social services across the board. So here's the thing, 24, yeah. more than half are dealing with a lot or a great deal of stress. So more than 50% are, people are stressed out more than normal over there. And a third say about a moderate amount. Very only twenty percent. Only one out of five say they're only stressed a little bit. Pretty big deal. I, and I think it's good to point out too, just for point of reference, when we look at this in three months, six months from now, is that this is during the third spike of COVID cases here in the state of Ohio. Uh, so we've gone through the the initial uh, COVID case, then we had a summer spike, and now we're coming into our fall spike. And this was survey was done at the beginning of that, not even at the height of the numbers we're seeing today. Right, we're recording this on November 13th, just to give you some perspective of where that is, because there's talk of future lockdowns again. So we're not even through another you know, lockdown phase. Um, so here's, here's the next question we asked. In a typical week, how often do you feel stressed at work? Now look at this, nearly 40%, pretty close to half, just over a third, are stressed at work either always or most of the time. Our, almost half our employees. Well over a third, right? four out of 10, two out of five, however you want to word it, are stressed most of the time or all the time. And then uh, yeah. another third is stressed about half the time. It's Stress is a bigger issue. Obviously, it, it seems obvious, but we have numbers to kind of prove it now. 75% of the workforce there was stressed while they're in the workplace. So only, 20, yeah. only one in four of your employees is not feeling a large amount of stress in the work environment today. If this is real. I mean... I knew the numbers would be high, but this was eye-opening for me. In a typical week, how often do you feel stressed at home in your personal life? Because I'm thinking, 
the politics and all the stuff going on and, and writing and, you know, uh, all the stuff out the personal life is really going to affect the workplace and not vice versa. And, and literally I may have missed that one a little bit. One out of four people answered and said, always, or we're always, or usually stressed at home in our personal life. So much lower than a stress at work. So less than half are stressed at home or in their personal life. So if you look, the numbers at home are much lower than stress at work. Typically what we saw in a survey pre COVID Nick was people had a little more stress at home than they did at work and the stress at, at, right. at home was kind of going into stress at work. And now it's completely flipped. The stress of work affect work performance. Okay. Now on the left side, we have the, the people answering the respondents answering the survey on the right, we have coworkers. You're going to look coworkers are much higher because what typically what happens is it takes a little extra humility to notice in yourself. We all have blind spots yeah. when it comes to personal reflection. So the numbers are still high. So respondents said, uh, 29% said it affects my work performance a moderate amount, 44% a little. Now, if you flip over to coworkers, one out of four, either a lot or a great deal. It affects my coworkers, one out of four of them, either a lot or a great deal. And a moderate amount, 30, a moderate amount, 37%. So this is big. So you're talking like over, uh, what is that? Over 60%, 70%, you're, 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 you're getting over 60% saying it, stress is affecting the performance of my coworkers, which is probably a little bit more accurate, maybe somewhere between between what I'm dealing with and what my coworkers are is the truth. But that's pretty yeah, and, and it's interesting is that we're seeing that. And that poses the question, and this is a great reason why people need to follow up some of these other webinars and podcasts we did, mm -hmm. is because we're seeing in our coworkers, are you just noticing it and saying, man, Johnny looks really stressed? Or are we taking steps to help each other and right. build each other up and support each other during these stressful times? Yes creating those workplace support systems, especially those social emotional systems we, that often get neglected at work because we think that's a personal thing. All right, so this one says, how stressed do you think your colleagues and coworkers are? Now check this one out. Almost half think their colleagues and coworkers are dealing either with a great amount or a lot of stress. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. 49%, you know, half your companies, you think my coworkers and colleagues, they're stressed, they're overstressed. And stress leads to accidents because stress leads to us missing steps, not doing things safely, um, not focusing on the task at hand. So this, not only do we have a health effect, but we have a direct safety effect on your company too and your coworkers. There's a greater probability for workplace injury. It makes you more situation. irritable. So there's, a, there's an issue with workplace violence there. It, it actually lowers your response time and it actually distracts you in, in uh, situational awareness issues. And so these are big things, how stress affects you. I encourage you all to go Google like uh, the effects of stress because it'll clearly, you'll say, wow, it has a direct impact on safety. Do you think that stress causes your colleagues or coworkers to occasionally work unsafely? Now this is eye-opening for safety council members here. Almost half think that right. stress likely causes them or their coworkers to occasionally, at least occasionally work unsafely. And we know, Nick, it only takes one time not paying attention to ruin someone's life or, or to even get a factory shut down, right? And there's two reasons. Yeah, there's two reasons that people are working unsafely or we perceive that, right? Number one is because that distraction we just talked about. But number two is we know safety is important. And most companies recognize that too. But we're in, a, we're in an era in which companies are struggling to survive. And so sometimes shortcuts are taken or expected to be taken. Mm -hmm. Right or wrong, it happens. And so employees are not making the greatest decisions sometimes because it's a decision between, can I bypass this to get more product out and keep my job? Or do I do it the way it's supposed to and I might not have a job tomorrow? And so this stress is resulting in that, those decisions. Stress has a direct correlation to workplace safety. We understand how health and wellness does, but we don't really talk too much about stress because it's like this ambiguous uh, you know, th invisible thing we can't put our hands on, but it's, it's a real big impact right. on everything. Okay. So which of the following have increased your stress lately? This is not the entire list, but this is the, the top six right here. Um, <clears throat> loneliness and isolation. Can't connect with friends as much. People still are. And it's probably why the virus is spreading a little bit more because you know, the whole isolation thing, but one out of four workers are just not having contact, you know, a lot of us get our social contact from work, so this is a big deal. Uh, fear of losing job, layoffs, 37%, Nick. 
And that's a real threat, isn't yeah. it? Social issues. Yeah. Okay. Now this is coming right before the election within a couple of days. So this is, you know, some of this is peaking. Social issues cause stress, 49%. Stress or pressure at work, 56%. So it's the third uh, single thing that people cause out that's causing them stress lately. Not just social issues, not just politics. You see in the next bar down, politics, 66%. And COVID-19 concerns is 68 So COVID is only 2% more than politics. And politics is only 10% more than pressure at work. So 56% of people saying, Pressure at work is causing me issues. Unbelievable. Which of the following do you currently yeah. practice to reduce stress? Again, this isn't the whole list that they had to choose from, but here's the top seven. So prayer or any kind of faith-based activity, 39%. Uh, meeting friends in person, trying to connect with friends in person, uh, keeping that under 10, of course, 44%. Reduce media. Yeah. And in, in, media and social media were, were tied for the same at 44%. Get better or more better or improve sleep, 46%. Exercise, 46%. Spend time outdoors, 51 And avoid toxic people, 59%. It's a good idea. So does your company currently talk to employees about stress and promote healthy ways to reduce it? This is the big thing that I really want to hit out of this uh, little podcast we're doing, Nick. Well over right. half, 59%, almost 60% of companies rarely or never talk to employees about stress. We just talked that half the people think, half our workers at the safety council members think that stress likely causes them to occasionally work in safely. So we talk to them about safety all the time, especially our safety council members, right? But we never talked to them about stress, which actually causes unsafe behavior. I, mean, I learned in social services, don't always focus on the behavior that you're actually seeing. Get to the emotional side, get to the environmental side that's actually triggering and causing people to behave the way they are. And that usually has better results. Only one third right. of companies talk about stress to employees sometimes, just sometimes. And, and yeah. you know, that this is a big deal. This should be part of our toolbox yeah. talk during the, the pandemic. Right. There's two takeaways from the, from this survey. Number one, companies need to start talking about stress. This should be included in your safety program, your safety talk. And, and letting people know that it exists and how you respond to it. And number two, the previous slide, people need to look at that and start implementing some of these activities in their life to de-stress themselves. Be it yes. shut off social media, go for a walk, walk on a treadmill, um, just get some fresh air, whatever it is, we have to disconnect sometimes. Absolutely. You have to take care of the self-care. And some of our other videos that are on YouTube now, we're doing an entire overcoming stress series. We, in some of those videos, we even talk about the self-care. I call it the self-care pyramid loosely. We just kind of came up with it when we were doing the podcast. It's, it's not scientific. It's just me, Mike, talking to counselors <laughs> yeah. and kind of saying, hey, there's kind of three steps here. The bottom of that pyramid is self-care. What we do in our daily routine, habits. Am I going for a walk? I know that's something you and I like to do, Nick. Go hiking at one of the great Portage Parks out here or the new Trail Lake Park in Streetsboro or Sunny Lake in Aurora, and we kind of – you can talk about that. I go to Planet Fitness uh, sometimes. Probably need to get there more often than not. But um, uh, there's certain times I like uh, prayer and solitude in the morning. That's just me. That's not for everybody. But you figure out those self care things. When that doesn't work, who do I go to? What do I turn to? The next phase is the support system. I go to my spouse. You know, I'm not really feeling that good. You know, keep me in your mind, or let's let's go do something. I need a break here, or I need to do this. Maybe I talk to my pastor. Um, other friends, family that you kind of reach out to and make sure those are healthy people though. Make sure they're not people that are, uh, you know, have a high degree of dysfunction that's going to lead you down the wrong path, which we see a lot, right. trust me. And, and the next phase is, man, even my support system can't help me with whatever I'm dealing with. It's still lingering a few weeks. And Jennifer Parmenter, in one of those videos that I'll be promoting next week, Nick, has been saying, listen, if you're just dealing with something, you can't shake the feeling, that's when you know you may want to get a higher degree of help. So if you're self-care, you may want to go to support system at that point. If you're already doing the support system, you still can't shake it. You might want to go get professional help, counselors, therapists, listen, and, and we've got to knock the stigma out just because you're dealing with some kind right. of form of depression. Doesn't mean you're crazy. Doesn't mean you're insane. You're not howling at the moon. Like this old fifties idea of what we have in mental health. No, it just means you're stressed and you have this uh, thing you're trying to process in your emotions. And there are techniques that, they walk you through to help you process that more clear. And they really just guide you to overcoming the issue yourself. So we highly recommend that. Um, 
Nick, is there any final words you'd like to say about this? You know, I think the big thing is during these stressful environments uh, that we're in, you know, we're, we're in this for the long haul, and I think we just need to take some time for ourselves, um, self-reflection, spending time to take care of yourself. And it's very easy, especially with so many more Americans working out of the home, to dive into work and never leave it. It's just, it's right, it's in the room next door to you, you continue pushing through. You just, you got to pull a plug on it, right? And you just got to say, hey, this is my time after 5 p.m. or whatever it is. You got to disconnect. Um, and you and we as leaders need to start talking to our employees and, and to our team members about stress. And don't be afraid to, to lead somebody down that road of that conversation to help them because these are unprecedented times. This is a new experience for us. And we have to combat stress to keep the workplace safe. I tell you what, I hear all the time that people, uh, they preach productivity and, and no matter what field we're talking about, and they talk about how you can shorten your meetings up and all this. And I tell you, there were teams I was on in the past and in my current position, old teams, I was on a, a program called Portage Area Transitional Housing. And we were amazing. People totally different in the political spectrum that we would not get along. And our manager at the time and who became our director would literally do these icebreakers and do these team building activities. We became a family. We, and we would center our meetings around lunch. And, and it was like a potluck every Monday. And people, the greatest right. part of our work week was coming together. And I haven't worked with that program in probably at least a few years, at least three years, maybe four years. And we still keep in touch. We text baby pictures to one another. I mean, it, it literally involved around a family. So I encourage you make time for your people, whether that's, uh, you know, people underneath you, your coworkers, colleagues, whatever, make time to engage. And I know we can't be within six feet of each other. Do a Zoom call. I know people are getting Zoomed out, but listen, it's, it, it's literally our committee meetings. We'll hang on after the meeting and talk. A lot of us after yeah. our webinars, we'll shut just, the recording down and people will keep talking because people are hungry for a human touch, a human connection. Yeah. And there's simple things you can do with Zoom or any of those things. You can play some tic-tac-toe. Uh, put up the whiteboard and have a little <laughs> bit of interaction. It's just something fun to break up the day. The other big thing that we've started that, that I've been working on in my organization is a book club. Hey, we pick a new book every month. We download it on our Kindle and then we just talk about it, right? It's yeah. just, it gives us something to do outside of work and a disconnection. So our so members out there to get involved. Yep. Ad, that's a good tip, Nick. Thank you. And I just encourage our employers out there, talk to your employees about stress. You don't have to be a Debbie Downer, so to speak. You just, Talk to them about the positive side, about taking care of yourself. Just do these Zoom call connections if you're not working in the same facility and just say, hey, I just want to check up on you. I've been doing that to people lately. I've been trying to spend a little extra time saying, hey, how are you doing? Let, you know, let's connect face to face so we can see each other has a higher degree of human connection. Because I tell you, Nick, even when I go walk at Sunday Lake or one of these great parks in Portage County, and just to see people and they, we smile and nod because everyone's happier at the park. I actually feel a greater degree of human connection, even though I don't have a conversation. We're socially distanced, right? We're not having a conversation. But getting out where people are, it's such a small thing that kind of makes you feel like you got that piece together. So to so all of our members out there, thank you so much. Go to our website uh, for our own Overcoming Stress campaign. If you go to PortageCountySafetyCouncil.com, there's a campaigns tab. Underneath that, you'll see Overcoming Stress now, right now, we're not making posters and stuff like we've done in the past because everyone's working from home. We don't really need to do that. But what we are doing is creating a, a video series, and it will eventually become a podcast series. We already have, like I think, about two dozen resources from the past and, and, and recent videos we're doing. And we're going to keep putting those out there at least until uh, the holidays are over through January. And then at some point, we're going to put together, we're going to ask all of our uh, presenters that have been on those calls with this if they want to contribute to an employer toolkit and we're going to put a toolkit linking all those resources in the electro electronic document so if you're in hr and you're listening to this we're, we're creating these tools for you view them yourself give them to employees and then uh and everybody out there you know just take care of yourself like nick said nick any final thought all right that's it no i think we just uh, we're creating some great tools and um, i want to thank everybody for their time today uh, don't forget to reach, reach out, support each other as we go. And most importantly, everyone be safe. Be safe.